In this video, I am going to show you guys how to make your own FCS2 Finbox install jig. Whether you just want to do one or two boards for your mates because they love FCS2. Oh, I love FCS2, it's the best. You won't need to purchase the expensive manufacturer's jig. For about $10 worth of plywood, I'll show you guys how to get proper installs, nice and clean, perfect every time. Let's make this jig. What you will need, you will need to grab yourself some 12 mil plywood for the jig base, double sided tape, a quarter inch laminate trimmer, any quarter inch laminate trimmer will be fine, just a clear sliding base on it, it's all fairly standard when you purchase the trimmer, you've got a couple of spanners to change your router bit out. And the router bit is just the flush, straight flush router bit that comes with the trimmer. Nothing fancy. And we're just going to use that straight bit there without the cutting edge to run along our jig. That is just the box in which it came in. And we need a couple of Forstner bits. I used the 35mm bit, the large one, and it fit perfectly. Some PPE guys, so you don't poke your eyes out. And here you can see I'm just measuring my router bit, and it's two inches long with an inch and a quarter long shank. Quarter inch thick, and it will fit in your trim router amazingly. From there, I grabbed my FCS2 box, and I roughly centered it on my jig plate. I just grabbed my ruler and ran it from corner to corner to find a rough center. X marks the spot. Whapped it on there and just traced it around with a Posca pen as best I could. I then wrote FCS2 on the jig plate because if I did not, well, I would forget that it was an FCS2 box jig plate. Uh, grab my Forstner bits, mm, wrong size, I grabbed a 35mm and it fit perfectly into the snug corners of the FCS2 box. I then nailed this shot by showing you 35mm on the Forstner bit. Great work. Over to the drill press and I just slowly but surely line it up perfectly in the very end of the FCS2 box outline. Now if you guys don't have a drill press that's no biggie. You can simply just use a standard drill with the force a bit in it and if you don't have a standard drill I cannot help you. Once we've drilled out our two 35mm circle holes, over to the vise and grab our jigsaw. I just then cut as closely along the line on the inside of the line as I could. So I'd have a little bit of play to come back with the sandpaper and the file and clean it up nice and neat. And just do a little test run and make sure she fits snug. You don't want to make it too loose because don't forget you'll be routing out foam. So just make it nice and snug. And now we are getting into the nitty gritty of this build. So that box is 37mm wide at the widest point. Divide that by 2 for 18.5mm for our middle point. 
Run two straight lines down the outside. Measure in 18.5 mil and find your middle. So that dot there represents the very middle of our box. Just do the same on the bottom and then we just want to whack a line straight down the middle and that's our middle line. So now from the middle, we want to place two marks at 3.5 mil either side of middle. What that is, is they are your side fin marks. So your fin tab box is seven mil thick. Seven mil divided by two is 3.5, I really hope. And these will be where we line up with our side fin boxes. So our rail boxes will line up on either the left or the right hand side of middle. So once you put your dots down and you're fairly happy with it, you can just draw a straight line all the way through. You can go from one end of the jig plate to the other. It doesn't really matter. You can just see my mathematical equations on the side of the jig there. You don't have to do them. Beautiful hand, should have been a hand model. So now I'm just marking middle, M for middle. Now this is where it gets tricky guys. Right hand goes on your left line, left hand goes on your right line. So just trust me. I'm gonna clear this all up very soon. Make sure you mark the front and the back of the jig plate. And you can make your jig a little bit cleaner, a little bit tidier than mine. Mine's a bit rough. You can trim it up. You can make it out of other materials. Do whatever you like. It's your jig. So although you don't see me doing this, you do need to carry those lines through the middle of the plywood so they meet up with the foam. As you'll see in my next shot, I've carried them down so I can mark my fin placement line up with my jig nice and center. So now we need to find depth of cut for our fin box. It's a fairly straightforward process when we know how, so I'll just run you through it now. Grab your router, grab your router bit and make sure it's facing upwards. And we're going to use this non-cutting part of the shank to run along the inside of our jig as a forks bearing. So whack your jig onto your router like so. Make sure that you have the non-cutting part of your router bit running flush along the inside of your jig. This is the most important part of this guys. You've got to make sure that it's not cutting into your jig. You just make sure that the shank with the non-cutting part is running along the inside of the jig. Put your FCS2 box onto your jig and now manipulate the depth until the top of the router bit is flush with your FCS2 box, but the flange is still proud of him. So with the depth set, now I'm just gonna mark up a couple of fake fin box positions for you guys to see how it actually works. So you just have to pretend that this is an actual board and I'm marking this on the tail where my fin boxes are gonna go. So there's my line, there's my rear dot, and this is on the right hand rail. So you always position your fin box jig on the rear dot. So what we want to do here is we want to use the left hand line that we put the right hand mark on. Sounds weird doesn't it? But the reason for that is because we want the inside of our fin running parallel with that line. We don't want that line on the middle of the fin or the outside, we want the inside foil lined up with that line. So you can see there's my right hand rail mark, my dot, 
and I move my jig over and put the left hand line, which I put the right hand mark on, onto that line. This is the correct way to install your fins. You want the inside foil of the fin running parallel with your line. And you can see I just manipulate it here. I'm doing this one handed so it's a bit difficult. And there we go. Now obviously if you're doing your center fin for your thruster, you would use the middle line. You want that as a 50-50 straight down the middle. So you'd use your middle line for your center thruster and you'd use your right hand for your left and your left hand for your right. So there you can see I'm using my left hand line for my right hand rail. So I'm just setting my depth, tightening up my clear slidey base. I don't even know what you, what would you call that? Slidey trim base thing? Yeah. So safety's paramount here guys. I like my fingers. I like to scratch. I like to open jars. I like to pick my nose. So just slowly tilt your router in and take the utmost care. Slow and steady and just follow the inside of your jig. You'll have to route all of this foam out because it's only a small diameter route of it. But just follow the inside of your jig plate. Turn your router off and wait for that bit to stop spinning before you take that out. You could destroy your board, you could destroy your fingers. So just get rid of any debris, blow it away, brush it away, vacuum it away, just get rid of it. And now we do a dummy fit. So in this fit you can see that line is running on the inside foil of my fin. Now that's the correct way to install a side fin. Obviously if it was a middle thruster fin that line would be directly running straight into the middle of your fin. So you can see it fits very snugly, very professional looking, no big gouges out and this makes your board look so much better. Taking the time to install the fin boxes correctly will make your board level up. So here I am just doing another little install and you can see bang on. I might have sat that just a little bit too deep half a mil maybe higher, but pretty bloody good for, for a first shot. And here it is guys, my final trick. Grab yourself a flush headed screw or something similar, a nail could work. Turn it upside down and put it inside your box. What you want to do here is push it around the inside of your routed out fin box hole. Flange the bottom of that hole out so when you put resin in there, it's going to spread out underneath your foam and create a stronger box install. All you futures guys, I'm hearing you. And next week I have a futures jig built, two-pass system, $5 worth of plywood, 